this morning. The Lord has blessed us that we can be in this house of worship together. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive. The Lord has brought us through this crazy winter time and the ups and downs of the ice storms and the children being out of school. And I know that just helped everyone, didn't it? Yeah. Who's going to watch them? Yeah. But it's a blessing to be here this morning. Indeed, it is um, an honor and privilege for me to be called upon again to come and serve you this morning in the Word of God. And I'd like to thank Pastor Santos in his absence for trusting this old raggedy preacher in his pulpit to uh, take care of his flock for a short period of time and feed the flock. Uh, it's a blessing to be here and just praying that the Lord Jesus would hide me behind his cross this morning so that you would hear the word of God and that your concentration and your focus would be on Christ this morning. I pray that all of us would take our distracting apparatuses and silence them or maybe throw them out. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we are a distracted people. I've never seen, you know, I never would have thought that would come a time when we would, you know, be buzzing in our seats in the middle of church services and we go out into the hallways to have, have other conversations, but those that might be beneficial, you know what I'm talking about this morning. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. So let's allow God to have our attention this morning. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much to the elders that have greeted me and attended to me and uh, thank all of you for coming. So many faces, of course, I haven't seen and some I may never see again. But we pray that we're able to serve you in a manner that will help you to grow in God's grace. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just bless you and thank you so much because you are God and there is none other. I want to thank you, O oh God, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all our sin. I want to thank you, Lord, for loving us from before the foundation of the world, Lord, that you would have a plan, O oh Father, Lord, to bring our hearts back to you. I pray, O oh God, that you would bless and be with the pastor, Lord, of this dear church. Please be with Pastor Santos, his wife, and his family in a very special manner, forgiving sin and empowering, Lord, for your work. I pray, Father, that you would be with this congregation that you would be with us this morning, Father, Lord, and help us, Lord, to humble our hearts in your presence, Father, that that which you have for us this morning might be received, and, Lord, that we might be strengthened. I ask your blessing, your mercy, that you would hide me behind your cross. Oh, God, Lord, that your anointing would be upon me, Father, Lord, that your word might go forth. In Jesus' name, church, say amen. amen. Will you turn with me to the book of Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 53, and also in the New Testament, turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. That is the book of Isaiah and the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. So you can go to Isaiah first, and we'll stop by there. And we will be reading... Only a few verses here this morning. Will you stand with me as we read the word of God this morning, please? Will you stand? I will be reading from the authorized King James Version. I am reading Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 through 6. And then I will be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 4 reads Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And as the sister said this morning, with his stripes, we are healed. 
all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid up on him the iniquity of us all. Now, if we will turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. In fact, I may just read two scripture here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and verse 21. Praise God, it's good to hear pages turning. Amen. You can't hear. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, but turn it there anyway. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are what? Behold, all things are become. In verse 21, can you read that with me? We may have different versions. Let's see if we can struggle to read that together. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Church, say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we approach that day of remembrance that many call Easter, and some as myself call Resurrection Sunday, we are reminded of the Savior who bore our sins to Calvary's cross and died in substitution for our death. We are reminded of the Lord of glory who made an appointment before the foundation of the world to be born into our experience that we might be reborn into his eternity. Great blessings come at a great price. Great blessings come by great benefactors, whether they appear to be great or not. The blessings of salvation came at the greatest price and was paid by the greatest benefactor. His name is Jesus the Christ. What's on my heart today? And it's interesting because this message just came to my heart a few days ago. And, uh, well, uh, maybe a week or so ago, uh, and I uh, preached it at our church last Sabbath, and Pastor Santos calls me while I'm in the yard uh, uh, cutting grass, uh, uh, was I trimming a tree or whatever I was doing, and, and asked me would I come. And I pretty much knew what I wanted to speak on uh, when he called me. So what's on my heart today is to focus our attention on that blessing that Christ offers to all mankind and that which he gives uh, to as many as will receive him. That blessing is the blessing of another chance. Are y'all with me today? All of mankind in general and all of us in particular are desirous of another chance. Have you ever been late for a particular appointment or event that was very important to you? Have you ever missed an opportunity that you very much wanted or needed to experience? Or have you ever taken an important test? No, I didn't look into your life. <laughs> have you ever taken an important test and, and not as this brother did, but maybe you failed that important test, failed to make the passing grade? Have you ever participated in some sort of sporting event, uh, some type of competition and came out on the losing end? Have you ever misbehaved <laughs> and hurt someone deeply? Maybe causing separation between you and a spouse or you and a dear friend. Have you ever been so irresponsible that you messed up some key area of your life? Your time, your, your, your talent, maybe your treasure, maybe your temple. You didn't pay attention. You didn't follow the right instructions. You didn't go in the right direction. For most of us, the answer to those questions are a resounding yes. And the one thing that most of us desire after such experiences is another chance. Another chance to be on time. Another chance to take hold of a missed opportunity. Another chance to pass that test. Hallelujah. Another chance to be the winner and take home the trophy. 
Another chance to be kind and considerate. Another chance to be the healer and not the destroyer. Another chance not to go into debt. Another chance to use your talent so you wouldn't lose your talent. Another chance to say, I'm sorry. Another chance to say, I forgive you. Another chance to eat right, act right, do right, buy right, love right, and just get life right. Where do you fit in this another chance business? I've had my own experiences with sin and mistakes. I was my mother's worst child. Yeah, me, the old raggedy preacher. Of course, over the course of my life, I've had my own episodes of disobedience and rebellion against God and rebellion against authority. They put me out of high school because I was so full of myself that I rebelled against authority. I've lied, cheat, cheated, stolen. I have had a dirty mouth and I've had dirty thoughts. I've had my own issues with anger and unkindness. I've neglected my own well-being and dishonored Almighty God in my body with alcohol and, and drugs and tobacco, sexual debauchery, promiscuity, dirty movies, and, and, and addiction to television and what the Bible called licentious living. At times, I've been too lazy to work and too busy to study. And though I have been delivered from a lot of that filth and foolishness, there have been times when my life has been a complete mess. I am a man who has needed another chance. I've needed another chance at home with my mama. Didn't have a dad. I've needed another chance with my wife, my, 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 my children, my family. And, but most of all, I have needed another chance with God. And don't be too quick to cover your mouth or shake your head at my story. Because you've got a story of your own. Hello, somebody. You've had your own episodes with sin and shame. Uh, some of you are living in disobedience before Almighty God to this day. Can you say amen? Some of you have brought with you a load of guilt and an aching heart because of something you've said or done in this past week or beyond, and you're longing for another chance. The remembrance of Calvary's cross and a crucified Christ shines the light on God's awesome love to offer another chance. I want to talk about another chance. I'm going to talk about, first of all, another chance the reasons. We need another chance because we're born in sin. Turn in your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 3. Very quickly, i got to move fast. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. I'm going to go ahead and read while you catch up. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside, verse 12. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. And when he said no, not one, all of us fit into that bucket. Apart from Christ, there is no one right with God. There is no one looking for God apart from Christ. We need to understand that, listen, uh, people say, well, I found Jesus. No, you did not. You hadn't found Jesus. He found you. And then he said, yo, here I am. Oh, you said, oh, that's Jesus. Jesus is the one. He is the master initiator. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Hallelujah. He came looking for me. And he came looking for you. We need another chance because we just don't get off to a great start. Huh? Psalm chapter 58 and verse 3. You can write some of these down because I've got to move. 
Psalm 58 verse 3 says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies. And I found out you don't have to teach a child to tell a lie. Just put some cookies on the table and tell Johnny, Johnny don't touch them cookies. I'll be right back. And you come back and Johnny has a mess of crumbs. Come on, somebody. All over your face. All over his face. And you say, Johnny, look, Johnny, 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 it, 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 it's half a cookie missing. Johnny, did you, who, who, who ate the cookie? No. <laughs> you don't have to teach a child a lie. We are born in sin, so we need another chance. Amen. We need another chance because we're ignorant. And I know some of you all high class folk don't like to be called ignorant. Come on, somebody. The truth is that we just don't know everything that pertains to God's truth. We haven't experienced everything. And we don't know, come on somebody, everything. And we tend to be so hard-headed and hard-hearted that too many of us don't even care to know what we need to know in regards to the word of God. We live in selective ignorance, come on, because we want to live our way. Don't tell me the truth. That might go against my living. Whether it's about the Sabbath. You know, people don't really want to know about the Sabbath. Huh? Somebody might have to keep it. Might have to give up something on Saturday. And listen, don't go looking at some of these Sabbath keepers sometime because you can't tell the difference. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He didn't say that. Somebody get my car ready to leave. Amen. Whether it's the truth about the Sabbath, whether it's the truth about the state of the dead. Are y'all with me today? Whether it's the truth about homosexuality or the health message, people want to sometimes stay ignorant. Whether it's about the truth about abortion or race relations. Are y'all with me today? I didn't come to make friends. I came to make disciples. Come on, somebody. Huh? See, 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 we, we need another chance because we're ignorant to the truth of God. And sometimes we are selectively ignorant. I don't want to know because that might, uh, that may cause separation between me and the folk I hang out with. Uh, that may, are y'all with me today? That may cause uh, separation and I may not be able to go to that club anymore if they know that, uh, well, this is really my conviction. We need another chance because we're weak. We're weak in this flesh. Can you say amen? We are weak spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. We meet up with challenges for which we are too weak to overcome by ourselves and too weak to overcome all the time. You know, sometimes Satan can bring something at you and he didn't get you that time. Are y'all with me? Yeah, but then he said, I'll get him the next time. And I'll go this way or I'll go that way. We, we need another chance because we're weak. In our spiritual weakness, we remain babes in Christ longer than we should. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, be, be, because uh, we haven't taken time to feast on the word of God and spend time in his presence. In our mental and emotional weakness, we can't handle all the pressures in life. And in, in, in our own strength, we're weak, be, so we become angry. We're weak, so we become unkind and, and disappointed and, 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 and depressed and defeated until we can't function. Then that dysfunction spreads throughout the family and spreads throughout our communities. In Romans 12, 21, the Lord said, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And, and, and when, when you look at that, you say, well, how do I do that? He said, well, come back to verse 1 and verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, you know what I'm talking about, a living sacrifice, what? Holy and acceptable to God, which is what your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. We need another chance because we're weak. We need another chance because we're prideful and rebellious. Prideful and you know what? I thought about it and you know, you've heard that song, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. 
We sing another song, have my own way self, have my own way. This is my life and I'll do what I say. Amen. We are a prideful people. We are a rebellious people. That's us. We're duped into loving ourselves more than we love God. That was Lucifer's problem. When you look in Ezekiel 28, 17, uh, God said of Lucifer, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You, you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. So many of us are so proud of ourselves. Huh? So many of us are all that till we just can't deal with that. We have our degrees and we have our accolades. Can y'all say amen today? We're talented, we're smart, we're on, uh, in the top 10 of our class, and we look down on everybody else who's 11 and above. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yes, sir. We need another chance because we're prideful and rebellious. We need another chance because we're stiff-hearted. Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. But how many messages, y'all, have we heard about the way God wants us to live? Sabbath after Sabbath, year after year. And some of us have been in the faith for so long and we look no different today than we did 20 years ago. We need another chance so that we can turn from our rebellion. We need another chance because sin is a binding transaction. Sin is a captive interaction. Sin will lock you up. Amen. You know, for years, started on drugs when I was 14 years old. And I remember the grip of the drug. I remember trying to quit. You know, I'm going to quit. And nothing was happening because sin is a captive yeah. transaction. I know of a dear brother. He was the jewel, one of the jewels of his family. And he got a hold of drugs years and years ago. And drugs got a hold of him. And he's fought that bear, that lion, for years and years and years. And some of us, y'all with me today? We need another chance because sin is a binding transaction. In Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 22, it says, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden by the cords of his own sin. How many times has the promiscuous girl or woman tried to quit? How many times has the liar tried to stop lying? <laughs> How many times has the drug addict or alcoholic tried to quit? How many times has the abuser tried to stop his abusing or her abusing? Sin takes you farther than you wanted to go. Sin costs you more than you wanted to pay. And sin will make you stay longer than you wanted to stay. We need another chance because sin is a binding transaction. We need another chance, and I like this, because God wanted us to have another chance. Oh, I thought that'd make somebody happy. Choir, choir, choir. Amen. Let me say this again. We need another chance because God wanted us to have another chance, and the church said, Amen. aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad? In the, in the Bible, in the Word of God, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world. Y'all with me? That we should be holy and without blame in Him, in, with Him in love. God had a plan from before the foundation of the world that He was going to bless us with another chance. Hallelujah. And listen, don't go telling me about he's the God of a second chance. Your second chance is bingo. You probably on chance number 30 million, maybe 
chance number 500,000 or whatever the case may be. He's not just the God of a second chance. Hallelujah. He's the God of another chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We fall down. What? We get up. We fall down. We get up. Are y'all with me today? The just man falleth what? Seven times, seven times. Are y'all with me? The just man falls, but praise God by the power of Jesus, because Jesus came, bled, and died. Hallelujah. He can get up. We need another chance. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. Can you say amen? amen? As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last days. And then in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world or from the foundation of the world. Before God said, let there be light, he had a plan for me and you. Amen. Amen. It's good. You know what? My great-great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother, we, um, back when I was a little boy, she was going down to Murray County where she's from. And... Um, we went down there, and we went down there with her cousin, or whatever he was, and um, we got down there, and he got drunk. And this, I'm talk, I said great-great-grandmother, amen. Her name was Miss Annie Wallace, lived over there on Fifth Street in North Nashville, praise God. But anyway, so mom, I called her mom, and let me tell you what mom said. When, when she found out he was too drunk, and he, she wasn't going to ride with him, are y'all with me? When she found out he was too drunk to take us home and she wasn't going to get in the car anyway with him like that, she, she got somebody to take us to the bus station and we caught a bus home. You know what she told me? She said, now this, I, I'm, I'm talking about I was a little boy, five or six years old, never forgot. And she said, don't you ever leave home without a way back. <laughs> Y'all hear me? Amen. Don't you ever leave Without a way back. Amen. Did you know before God gave me birth, He gave me a way back? Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. He's the God of another chance. Yeah. Hallelujah. He made a way out of no way. Yeah. A way for me to get back home. Yeah. And I'm so glad. Not only did God want you to have another chance, but He made a way to have another chance. Another chance, what does it sound like? It has a certain sound. Another chance has a certain look. The experience of another chance. The Bible has a number of places in his word that, that, that has illustrations of another chance. In 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 13, another chance looks like David telling, uh, looks like Nathan telling David, the Lord has put away your sins and you shall not die. After he confronted David about his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah, uh, another chance may come in the midst of a sentence, come on somebody, of correction and chastisement. Another chance, in, in Mark chapter 5, verse 8, another chance sounds like Jesus saying, come out of the man, you unclean spirit, in that he drove out the demons that drove that man to have a violent exist a violent existence and some of us in here have a violent existence but Jesus hallelujah has the power to give you another chance what does another chance sound like? What does it look like? Another chance in John chapter 11 verse 43 another chance sounds like Lazarus come forth Are y'all with me today? as Jesus restores uh, life to the dead. But you know what? We were dead. Amen. Huh? Amen. We were dead. In what? Trespasses and sin. Amen. You know, I, I heard uh, Robbie Zacharias, and uh, listened to some of his messages from time to time, he said this. He said, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. <laughs> Listen real close. Say, preacher, you're crazy. That's all right. 
Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people live. We are dead in trespasses and sin. We don't have the power of God to, to, to act like we ought to act. My sister calls that act right medicine. She said, I need my act right medicine today. Praise God. Another chance in John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, verse 4 and 13 and 14, another chance sounds like this. And I love this. Turn to John chapter 4, if you will, please. I'm giving you passages of Scripture. I'm hoping that you're writing them down. I'm trying to run through the message and hoping that you're grabbing a hold. Look at uh, John chapter 4 and verse 4. I'm reading again from the King James Version. You've heard about the woman at the well, amen? John chapter 4 and verse 4, the word of God says, and he must needs go through Samaria. Say that with me again. And he must needs go through Samaria. Now that's sweet. That's sweet. And, and, let, and let me tell you why. Because Jesus must needs come through my neighborhood. coming to the well. Are y'all with me? And he knows what time you're going to be somewhere all by yourself. Wondering how you got in the mess that you got in. Y'all with me? And he'll be there to speak a word that'll give you another chance. Hallelujah. And verse 13 and 14. And sometimes I like to start at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that says to thee, Give me a drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. And then, of course, she started talking about the well and the water. In verse 13, Jesus was saying, I'm not talking about that water. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Another chance has a certain sound. Hallelujah. Another chance has a certain look. When Jesus, in, in John chapter 8 and verse 10 and 11, when Jesus had raised himself up. Look at that, if you will. John chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. John chapter 8, verse 10, when Jesus had lifted himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, what'd she say, y'all? No, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. If I can be a little bit personal here, this morning as I'm up studying, and I've read this passage for years and years and years, but this morning this passage brought me to tears because I could see Jesus. You know, sometimes I believe the Spirit of the Lord just kind of takes us there. And I can see Jesus speaking softly. Can you imagine that? Just Jesus, and maybe even kneeling down there with her. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Where, where are your accusers, honey? Anyone condemn you? No, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's what another chance sounds like. Amen. It sounds like Jesus in his gentleness Amen. dealing with our sin. Another chance, the suffering servant. Let's go to our text and I'll head on towards the closing. Go to Isaiah chapter 53. Have you ever been invited to a great event and with great food and great atmosphere and at a great place and you know that somebody incurred great expense to pay for all of that? Such is new life in Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Such is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. It costs a great price and Jesus Paid it all. 
and, and, and I'm tempted to read the whole thing, but my time is running out. Our great opportunity to have another chance in the presence of God costs Jesus his life. Word of God says, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And, 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 and I can only imagine Jesus bearing our griefs and carrying our sorrows because I have had empathy for others who were hurting. But Jesus had empathy and love for all of us. Amen. He bore all of our griefs. He carried all of our sorrows. Amen. He counts the tears that fall from your eyes. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, the Lord Jesus. And what, sister, with his stripes we are healed. Amen. And it's, listen, it's more than a physical thing. And oftentimes we relate it to the physical and we should. But listen, there's a spiritual healing that only Jesus can give. Amen. There's a spiritual healing that only Jesus can give. Jesus can turn a madman into a humble man. Are y'all with me today? Jesus, hallelujah, can turn a loose woman into a blessed wife. Jesus can turn a deadbeat dad into a godly father. With his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we have another chance. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone. That's why I'm saying don't be too proud today. Amen. Don't be too proud today. You've heard my story and you say, oh, I'm glad I didn't have to go there. Well, I wish I didn't have to go there. Amen. I wish my life had been so pristine and so clean. I wish I had had a father in the home. But hallelujah, Jesus can meet you where you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know? I, hallelujah. 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 I'm going to quit in a minute. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't know what it's like to be free from all that mess. You don't know what it's like to go from being a horrid man to being a husband. Are you with me today? Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He gave me another chance. Hallelujah. And he's here to give you another chance today. Hallelujah. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. Jesus is the author of another chance. He is the facilitator of another chance. Can you say amen? amen? And last of all, go back with me to first, 2 Corinthians, as it were. 2 Corinthians. We've talked about the reasons. We've talked about the looks and the sounds of another chance. We've talked about the suffering Savior. Let's look at the results. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, how'd he get there? Because God gave him another chance. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And then in verse 21, for he, almighty God, hath made him the Lord Jesus to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, that's the Lord Jesus, knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In Christ, the way is made for us to escape the wrath of God. In Christ, the way was made to be reconciled with God, to be brought back together 
with God, to be reunited with God as someone who stands in the gap and negotiates a peace treaty. The Bible says in in Romans chapter 5, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. You know what the opposite of peace is? War. And before we're born again in Christ Jesus, we're at war with God because we're on our own program. But Jesus comes and he gives us another chance. Jesus comes and he gives us new life. And I've got peace, hallelujah, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's sweet. It's sweet. That's why we can sing that song. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him. Hallelujah, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Another chance. That's what he gave us. Hallelujah. 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 That's what he gives us. Another chance. He lives to give us another chance. He lived to make a way. And in Hebrews 7, uh, 25, it says, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost. I was in the guttermost. He saves to the uttermost. He's able to save to the uttermost those that come to unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. I want to close with a poem. Close with a poem. By Kathleen Wheeler. He came to my desk with a quivering lip. The lesson was done. Have you a new leaf? New sheet of paper, new leaf for me, dear teacher. I have spoiled this one. I took his leaf, all soiled and blotted, and gave him a new one, all unspotted. Then into his tired heart I smiled. Do better now, my child. I went to the throne with a trembling heart. The day was done. Have you a new day for me, dear master? I have spoiled this one. He took my day, all spoiled and blotted, and gave me a new one, all unspotted. Then into my tired heart, he smiled. Do better now, my child. That's why Jesus came into the world and died on Calvary's cross to give you another chance. And he rose to give you a new day, a new start, a new life. But one day, I just want to let you know, all of our chances are going to run out. In other words, you only have so long to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Will the musician come, please? Uh, it may not be on the program, but could we have a musician to come, please? Is someone here? <laughs> Softly and tenderly. One day all of our chances are going to be gone. In Psalm chapter 103, verse 9, word of God says, He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, the Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today, you have another chance, but this may be your last chance. This may be your last opportunity to surrender your heart and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave you another chance. He gave you today. He gave you 
right now. So will you take this chance to come to Christ? I need a mic. Will you take this chance today and come to Christ and let him bless you with another chance? Jesus is able to change your life. Jesus is able to give you a new start. Elder Bigno, would you come and stand with me, sir? And we're going to make the appeal. What well, the old folks say, open the doors of the church and invite you right now to take advantage of that chance to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you come today? Will you come today? He loves you. He gave his life for you. He is able to fix that which is broken. He is able to cleanse that which is filthy. Will you come?